Okay, I think we're live. Hello, everybody. Hello. In Facebook land. Oh, Facebook land. What's happening there? Oh, I'm getting called. <laughs> Your That's sister's t- calling. Typical timing. My sister's calling in the middle of the live. <laughs> That's always how it happens. I think you should answer. <laughs> See if she wants to join us. I feel like Eno would be game. Right. <laughs> You're live on the internet. Oh, no. I l- yes. So, um, hello, everyone. Uh, we actually just finished a session of recording videos for our online course Mm -hmm. which is launching very soon to a store near you not going to be a store it's going to be online Uh, but uh, you can access it pretty soon uh, and we're you know feeling really good about it yeah it was really fun we spent pretty much the whole first half the day recording um, the beginnings of it and it was really cool I feel like There's a lot of things that we have been reflecting on and learning about over the last couple years since we launched One Solution, and I still can't get over how not that long ago it was that we launched One Solution. It feels like it's been a long time. But I think we've learned so much from um, the initial spark of the idea to the conferences we've had to then launching the nonprofit and the different projects that we've been doing in different parts of the world. that have really led to us deciding that we really wanted to do this online course because I feel like um, now more than ever, and maybe it's just because I'm looking in this direction, but I don't, I don't think so. When I talk to the general public, it seems to be a very common thing on people's minds, which is how can we participate in helping the world? And I think it's really important for people to feel empowered to do that to understand how they can make change on any level that inspires them whether that's in their family or in their community in their kids school or in their company or they want to change a larger system if they're looking at systems um, whether it's to do with the environment or criminal justice or race issues like there was a quote once I'm I don't know who said it but I loved it and it was um The biggest threat to the environment is the belief that someone else will fix it. And I think that sort of sentiment is what, for me, is most exciting about the online course. It's really giving people the tools and the roadmap and the understanding of how anyone can make any change on any scale so that no one is feeling like a passive participant to what's going on in the world or a helpless participant to what they observe, you know, in the world around them or the media. So... I'm really excited about the timing of it, I think, for us, because like we said, we've learned a lot, and I feel like I would love to share and kind of pay forward uh, what we've gained in the last couple of years in working with different communities and systems and organizations and really just getting clearer, I think, on the source of change and the simplicity of that. Right. And for 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 the those of you who are watching, like you might be watching us just because you like following along, you like like what we're doing, and you want to support it, or you are also one of those who kind of like, oh, I want to make my own change in my own way. Mm-hmm. And we're really excited about like how simple that is compared to what we think it is. Like whether you are trying to just kind of deal with your own life or if you want to help someone in your uh, environment like neighbors or friends or groups or in your school or if you're in a business doesn't really matter where you are like we started one solution to show that no matter where you go in the world geographically no matter what age it is how you look how you talk uh, no matter your cultural background or past experiences or no matter the issue, big on a personal level or huge in terms of the system we have created, if you kind of listen and look behind where all of that came from, like where did it stem from, our hypothesis is that you would always find at the fundamental source the mind and the mind creating something out there that we then have to try to fix. Um, and it's really tempting to then be very distracted by the stuff we have created with our minds and, and try to fix it out there rather than looking at all those things actually come from the same place. 
And if you go to that same place, all those things will start to move and change uh, together rather than a separate thing. So it's kind of uniting everything and seeing that it's all interconnected in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just listening to you now, I realize kind of where we're going to be going on the course is looking at how the mind is the source of change, but then also helping people see what is it exactly about the mind? Like we're going to get really specific and simple about what are the things about the mind that anyone anywhere in the world can learn that will help them make change on any issue at any scale. I know it sounds like a lot of promises in one, but we really do feel that way because that's what we've observed right. is that there are fundamental points that anyone can learn and understand that will immediately allow them to go to the source of problems and the source of solutions and change so much faster. So, and we've really seen, um, like I said, in our work with different communities, dealing with different problems from very different backgrounds over the last couple of years of doing this work, just how to distill that down to what are the most fundamental points that anyone can understand that are universally graspable, that make sense and that create a shift in people that allow them to make change. So it's really you understanding that, but also giving you like the very simple roadmap for how to um, kind of point to that anywhere you would want to go, whether it's if you want to, you know, tackle environmental issues in your neighborhood or tackle how your school system is run and funded or tackle, you know, like I said, things like entire systems like the economy and why we still treat war as the most effective way of dealing with issues between countries like anyone you want to look at will be breaking it down into what are the fundamental points about the mind that need to be seen in order for that kind of change to be made right and one of them hello from greenland by the way anyone who's not from greenland please say where you're from too <laughs> but greenland actually had me thinking like you know because one of the points uh, from Norway. Oh, from Norway. Hey, Anetta, how you so doing? A Norwegian in oh, Denmark. Oh, in Denmark. Okay. Nice to meet you. So we have a Norwegian in Chicago here. Exactly. Norwegians <laughs> and a, and an American apparently in don't want to stay in Norway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, one of the points that we talk about in this course, but also in general, wherever we go, is the idea that humans are born with certain things. Uh, as a as a default like we, we use the word innate a lot like resilience for example is one of those things that we are taught maybe certain people have uh, or it's a, um, a quality that you train or it's contingent or certain external factors for example if you had a certain past you will be resilient if you had a different past you wouldn't be resilient uh, or uh, genetics, wh whatever right. it or must the right be. The right kind of parenting. The right or kind mentoring. of parenting. Like yeah. all these reasons that we say you need to have or you need to work on in order to be resilient. And one of the things that we teach everywhere is like it's the idea that resilience is, is innate to human life. That it's it's not something that is manufactured. It's not something that we go out and make happen. If you look at any humans, you would see a resilience. You would see someone being able to grow, go over things, uh, evolve, uh, find new paths within their minds. It's just that with the way the world is set up, we have trained ourselves to look at what's not resilient. We've looked at what's uh, kind of always moving. We've looked at kind of like our own psyche and, and things that should be something wrong with rather than what is actually before that that there's nothing wrong with mm. and when we you know go to greenland and you look at all the humans there you would see every human is born with, with that resilience. with resilience yeah. and every you know in all the places we go to work you know here in chicago or it's middle east or with with you know when we went to visit the uh, prisons in portland with the ios collective with the schools in tampa and florida then it, it's all the same thing and all the kids and everyone say like I didn't know I already had this inside of me 
I thought some, you know, something was wrong with me. I didn't think I was resilient. I didn't think I had this kind of health really within me. I was, I was thought there was something wrong with me. I was mentally ill. I didn't have mental health. Mental health was something that I was striving for, but it wasn't already within me. And if you have a society or a group of people or a world who thinks that their well-being and their resilience and all their feelings are dependent on external factors, there's no, of course, we're running around doing all kinds of stuff in order to cope with that. Because, like, that's a that's a horrible feeling to to not have what you need already inside. Then you would like look outside to external things, maybe material things or relationships or drugs or try to f get more security by doing certain things or growing or whatever it is at any level, you will see that if you don't feel like you already have everything you need uh, in, a, in an innate way, we will go out and look for it. And that is like a very basic point that is so simple, but you can see the effects. If people don't feel like they have it, we want to go out and get it. And the way we go out and get it usually isn't very healthy. It doesn't help us and it doesn't help society. And that's why we're, we have a lot of problems in the world that, that stems from this pure idea that what we have is not, we don't have access to it here. You have to go out and do something. You have to buy something. You have to be something. You, you cannot just be okay where you are. Mm -hmm. And that is a journey that leads down to wars and pain and suffering and uh, us versus them dynamics. It's just a quest that, that I don't know how, how why we did that, but it is a misunderstanding that is so everywhere. So uh, I know I'm rambling now, but it's like that simple point is so profound and it helps so many people and it's at the source of what's actually can make change. So. That's only one of the points that we were discussing. I know. But I was just thinking that's only one of the modules in the course. Well, you can talk about it forever because it's so right. – it affects everything. Right. So like the point that resilience is innate to human life, if you walk into any system and start with that as the foundation, it automatically creates something solid on which people can stand and build upon. And what you can see in what Adig just – explained and talked out is that because that isn't our come from our foundation as humanity currently every single system that humans create is built on top of insecurity which is like quicksand you know so you look at the financial repercussions of what you said right. is that you are not okay without a certain amount of wealth or without a certain amount of financial control over other people or, you know, and right. that all of the insidious insecurities that that breeds in the systems that we then build in terms of how we run a company or what kind of, you know, um, the ways that we treat fellow humans or the ways that we literally think about our own lives and ourselves and our self-worth and all of those things that stem from just that one example of the systems that get built on that insecure foundation. Right. And that is what I think is amazing is, again, it's only one of the points that we'll be covering of many in the course, but I can see that in every group of people that we've sat down with, whether it's people living in Gaza or people living in Southside Chicago dealing with gun violence or um, people living inside of a prison, they will all say that in working with them, that was one of the most helpful points that changed everything for them was that realization that, oh, just by being alive, I have the same resilience in me that a palm tree has. That life is designed to be able to bounce back, and yet no one's ever told me that or I've never felt that way. And they could see how that misunderstanding rippled out and limited them in life. Right. or led them to do certain things that were making things harder for them. And, and yet, get, the second they're given the opportunity, they realize, of course. Right. I can see so many examples where I have survived and come through things stronger than I ever would have thought was possible. And right. how did I do that? Well, I did it because I am alive. This is innate to human life. I have resilience. So does everyone.
Right. And if if you're a person that is working with people, it is just as important. Like if you see it for yourself, you'll start to see it in other people because, you know, with all the amazing nonprofits fits and uh, innovations and people and movements all around the world, if we are trying to solve things with the idea that people don't have that already inside of them, then first of all, we are underestimating the human race uh, and we are taking away power from people and we create a dynamic where people are, are looking towards other people to help them. Mm -hmm. Because if we come in and we feel like we, ha we are gonna give something that people don't already have, then they will start to believe that and they will be helped but they will still look outside and look towards somebody else uh, for their emotions or for their feelings, or whatever they're, they're working with. So for us, it's not only important for, for ourselves, it's important for anyone who's trying to do any work to know that all humans know what they need to know and have, you know, have what they need to have inside of them. And for us, our job no matter if it's you know your actual job or just a human job, it's just to listen and help that come out from within them. And that to me was like a new thing when I started in this, this field because I was thought like, oh, I've got to go to school and learn how to fix this or how to do this for people or help them see a certain thing that I thought it was good for them to see. But to flip it, I'm like, no, if it's true for me, it's true for everyone. So everyone has that thing inside of them and if we point them towards that they will figure it out and that has helped us so much when we do community work and it helps us in the business like no don't ask us for it it's like it's within you like you can figure that out so i think it's like mm -hmm. it's so huge for people who are helping or working with people to to know that and it, it creates like it's a, a such a like you know we're all in the same boat type of feeling and there's not really any levels we're all just kind of humans walking around doing our best uh, and trying to figure things out and we all have what we need inside of us the only thing is we have all kinds of random ideas that in our minds you know we're, we're different thinking that we don't know is basically made up we don't know it's it's created from our minds uh, so the fact that we believe everything that runs through our mind is a huge issue in the world uh, because it it, it it creates the distance from what's already there you start creating all these ideas and, and a lot of them creates to you know more separation and more problems in the world so to us, like it's a fundamental idea that all humans have exactly what they need inside of them and all humans make up their own version of reality. And it's the clashing of that that is creating the conflict and what we see in the world is that we stick to what's kind of impermanent and kind of comes and goes, which is like our different opinions. And we forget what's always true is that we're all in the same boat and we're all actually one. Like we're connected, not in the woo woo way. It's just like, it's true. We are all, you know, on a basic level, the same energy and we are all on a basic level uh, function the same way as humans. Like no matter where you go, as I said, like there's people from Canada here, Sweden, London, uh, you know, all these places, the same thing. It doesn't really matter. Like that's what's so amazing is like it's it's innate everywhere. Yeah, and the other thing that we'll be discussing more in depth in the course, which I think is fascinating about this, is that if you look at how people think differently, it's often described as that like the mind is at the effect of what's going on in the world, whereas what we want to turn on its head because it's unbelievably helpful at clearing up so many misconceptions about the world, which would explain why we can't make change happen faster. Mm -hmm is that the mind is the source of everything in the world, not at the effect of everything in the world. 
And I know for me, that was the biggest, like, hey, wait, what? <laughs> like, right. That was, like, completely turned things on its head for me was the realization that what we see in the world, it's not that it's being done to us. It's not that my mind or people's lack of well-being, like people talk a lot about the levels of stress, anxiety, depression that have become common in the world today. And they're looking for reasons out here. Like, you know, it's technology and people are more isolated and we're lonely. And while I can totally see the logic, I can see how those dots were connected. I can also see how we're screwed if that's true. Like, then what do we got to get rid of technology? Or, you know, we like you can see how there's a lot of efforts being made to fix that externally imposed problem. And what I find fascinating about what we'll be looking at more in depth is in the course is how the mind is the source of the state of the world, not the effect of the state of the world. We created it. And if we know that and we understand how we did that, we can change it faster. And if we don't know that, we will be rearranging the decks on the, the decks, the chairs on the deck of the <laughs> Titanic forever. And and you'll see that kind of that is that is kind of been our habit for a long time is looking at, you know, sort of whatever is the issue du jour and trying to tackle that thing as if the issue is somehow outside of people being done to them. Right. So for me, that's what gives me so much hope that by the end of the course, anyone could be like, oh, my God, we could solve that and that and that because they're all coming from the same thing. Right. Which really, like I said, for me was a massive eye opener and it completely rearranged how I thought of human beings, what's happening in the world and how we are a participant in that. Right. Oh, there's no link connected to the course info on your page. Yeah, so for the people who are wondering what we say when we say the course, so we're we're launching an online course. It's not coming out until uh, April 1st unless uh, you're a member. So the members get access March 1st. March 1st, so this Saturday gets like a, a first look of the membership. So, And, you know, I, I got to say, if you want to be a member, you get all that included and a lot more so. Uh, you can check on the website at onesolutionglobal.org and go to the membership page, and then you get access to um, the online course from March first. And if not, you can you can uh, check it out uh, once it launches to the public, April first. Yeah, we'll announce on Facebook when the online course goes live in April. Right. But if you want the sneak peek before then, you can join the membership. It's on the site now, but we can also put the link. Yes, we can put it right here. So people know. And we can also reach out to you when it's uh, when, when it's out, Suzanne. So. There's a kid in the window. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what are you doing cool. in there? <laughs> Should invite him in. Okay. All right. Anything else we want to share or are we good? Um, no, it's just really nice to see all these people. Hi, Ron from Minnesota. Nice to see you again. Shan. Sean uh, from London. You got Lynn, a good... Um, Rica, Crystal. Good international crew. Yeah. Well, thanks for tuning in, and um, like we said, we'll post a link to the membership below this, and you'll get more information about the online course when it launches to the public uh, April 1st, and yep. if you have any other questions, just put them in the comments below. Yeah, put them in the comments, and uh, let us know what you want our next live to be about, because mm-hmm. we would love to do uh, more of these, if you enjoy them. We should have Isabel do the next live. Isabel's oh, our, yeah. our newest member of the team. She's over there in the corner running tech for us. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, guys. All right. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Happy Tuesday. You would see it's right?